Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. I'm here with my co-host, David Floyer. This is the Virtualization Backup Spotlight. It's a sponsored segment by EMC's Backup and Recovery Group, uh, BRS. And David and I are going to set the tone uh, before we get in. For the next hour, we're going to be digging into to backup, backup as a service, how virtualization generally in VMware specifically have changed backup, what the imperative is for, for, for IT, uh, as shops, IT environments, CIOs, action items for, for CTOs and the like. David, thanks very much for joining me. You're very welcome, thanks for having me here. Okay, so we've got, we're going we're gonna to go through sort of a set of slides that we set up. We're going to go back and forth and generally have a discussion and, and just to frame things on the first slide, we're, talking, we're going to talk about how virtualization sort of changed the model forever. Uh, you were in the keynotes this morning and backup didn't get a lot of you know, lip service, did it? We didn't have anything <laughs> about backup. A little bit on HA and, and maybe disaster recovery, but but not was, much uh, on, yeah. really, like you said, nothing on backup specifically, but virtualization changed everything, so much. including right. backup. We backup. always talk about you know, yeah. storage. Pat talked about the IO blender effect, but he didn't talk about how it stresses backup. So I wonder if you could review for the audience how virtualization really changed backup. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it changed it because instead of having just one machine to back up, you had 10, 15, 20 machines to back up. So you and they were virtual. And they were virtual, yeah. they were still machines. So the original mechanism was to actually go through each virtual machine and back it up as if it was a real machine, and that wasn't very effective. So VMware came out with uh, some, some technology, particularly the change track uh, technology. CBT, change block tracking. Change block tracking, which allowed uh, only the changes to be backed up across the whole of the machine. Yeah, because otherwise you'd just be throwing all kinds of data and IOs at the, pro at, 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 at the back end. I mean, you've and got 20 times the uh, physical data that you, you would have had to have backed up. And that, and that becomes a choke point. And we've sort of, essentially, the, 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 the message here is that the old paradigm doesn't work in the newer, like sometimes call it paving the the cow path, and that's what a lot of people were doing. <laughs> yeah. And then with the data growth, forget it, you yeah. couldn't do that. So, um, so that's fine, but it, in my mind, David, a lot of that is sort of band-aids. Yes. You know, what's really required, we talk about cloud is a big theme at this event, and hybrid cloud and so forth. What's really required is, and we've talked about this, we've been talking about this for a while now, um, so we really want to test where we're at, but backup as a service, data protection as a service. So, so, Talk about that a little bit. Talk about what that means to you. Well, let's, let's start with VM. Uh, because the, the crucial thing in VM is to be able to manage the application itself, to have all of the data about the application available uh, to, the, uh, to, 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 to the systems uh, providers. So you need to know about the storage, you need to know about the, uh, you need to know about the servers, you need to know about the network and manage that as a whole. That's the starting point. And then once you've got that application running in that VM or running uh, in a folder, uh, uh, a set of applications in a folder of VM, then what you want to be able to do is provide them with the SLAs, the, uh, the, uh, all of the SLAs that uh, enable it to run. And one of those key enablers is what level of backup do you require? What level of RTO and RPO? Uh, re recover point objective and re um, re recover time. What's objective. the business impact? Really, is what it's you're talking the business about. impact. Yes, and and you want to be able to vary in the same way as you want to be able to vary the performance by VM, and a lot of the announcements around that the, today were uh, about being able to do that. You need to be able to vary the backup uh, by VM as well, so that you can really fine tune. 
uh, and, and allocate the resources exactly where they're needed for the benefit of the business. Yeah, we've talked about this a lot, is a lot of organizations look at backup as a one size fits all. Yep. They've got a single service level, independent of the, the, the SLA, independent of the RPO and the RTO, independent of the value of the applications. They look, here's backup, it's a bolt on, we got to have backup, so here yep. it is. Here's yep. your service level, just use it. Um, and so what that leads to is a situation where either your applications are, are over backed up, if you will, <laughs> over protected, you don't need yep. that much protection for certain applications. You don't necessarily need to replicate everything and you know, SRDF it to use an example. Or, that, and that, that's not so much of a problem other than you're spending too much money. The bigger issue is you, you don't have enough protection for critical for applications. For critical applications. Right. And, it, and, and protection both for software failure, for uh, microcode failure, as well as uh, physical failure. So we've sort of talked about this next slide, which is the technical angle, going from physical to, to virtual. Um, how about this data growth problem? I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, I always use the, the phrase, how do you back up two petabytes? You, you, you don't. Um, how should organizations think about dealing with data growth? That, that is, I think, one of the, the fundamental big questions that has to be addressed over the next, uh, over the next few years. Because as you say, the, the data is growing, enormous amounts of data, and there are some characteristics about data which make that growth difficult from a backup perspective. Uh, one of which is you want to get that data off the site as part of that protection. You need it somewhere else. And if you've got it somewhere else, then it would be useful to make, take advantage of having it somewhere else as well. Being able to take advantage of that data in another site. Uh, so the strategies have to take into account uh, two, two major things. First of all, data likes to be close to data. And secondly, that uh, you, you need to get that data protected as quickly as possible. It, uh, it, the quicker you can get it off site, the quicker you can get it to another location, uh, the more protection that you have, the, the, the quicker the recovery is. So those two fundamental, uh, almost opposite uh, trends that are, that are taking us there. So if we can provide solutions to that, and if, if there can be, for example, large-scale uh, mega centers which can provide a combination of private cloud and public cloud, provide uh, your own data there and next to data from the public cloud, if we can provide that sort of architecture in offsite, then that could be a very strong way of providing added value uh, to the organization from that backup data. So David, I want to go to the next uh, uh, action items for IT organizations. Uh, and I want to go through this fairly quickly because we don't have much time here, but um, the first one is that backup as a service, this is really sort of CIO action, backup as a service should be a fundamental part of transformation strategies. Uh, I, I actually have to say I was disappointed not to hear more from VMware this morning uh, about, about backup. Uh, it's a critical uh, uh, piece of the, of, the, of the stack, of the, yes. of the, of the ecosystem, yes. and, and one that should be fundamental, it should not be thought of as a bolt-on. There, there was a little bit, to be fair to them, in the vSANS, and in their ability to, to have alternative models for yes. backing things so, up. So maybe that's, yeah. the, maybe that's an evolution of the, of the thinking, that, that is just sort of there, and, and, yeah. and, and not necessarily explicit, but there's a lot of processes Still in place more. today that yeah. needs attention. Yeah. Um, what do you make of this hybrid cloud? Where does backup fit into the hybrid cloud? Well, <laughs> to me, the, the, the place of hybrid cloud is we have a remote copy of that backup, so let's take advantage of that. Uh, let's put that data, keep that, get that data and make some use of it and bring it close to other data in that cloud. So if we can use that cloud, uh, hybrid cloud to create it remotely and tie it together with the public cloud. And by tying it together, have it very close together so that you can uh, backhaul it rather than anything else. I think long term, that's going to be the strategy. That's so you take, be. be able to apply policies in a similar way, not necessarily the same policy, but apply policies yes. in a similar way. And, and have and the same catalog of policies apply right. to public versus private. You have the data private. there as a way of, of break, uh, cutting back over to it, so it's real data, but you can use that data in line with other data in the cloud 
to enhance the value uh, of both sets of data. Now, let's talk about um, in technology integration. Let's sort of talk to the CTOs here. Um, we always say, it, from a strategy standpoint, think about your entire application portfolio, but you will see specific implementations by use case. You'll see, yeah. you'll see VMware back up, you will see we're going to be at Oracle Open World in a couple weeks, you'll hear a lot about RMAN. So the, there, there is a place for bespoke, tailored implementations, but from a strategy standpoint, you need to be thinking about backup across the application Absolutely. portfolio. Absolutely, I agree with that. Okay, and then, the other one is organizational. What about the roles of the backup admin, the DBA, and application owners? How should those change and how are they changing? Well, if you can get to the application being the focal point, uh, and, and the set of services behind the application uh, provided in a much simpler way, you'll be able to get over to a much more of a DevOps type uh, of, uh, of organization by application, so that you can uh, use that uh, service, use those experts for an application and, pro and provide the storage, the network, the backup skills, all of those integrated in a few people for that particular application. All right, and then uh, we're out of time, but the last two we have, so the, from a vendor management standpoint, you got to find a, a company who's going to actually be able to deliver on their their backup as a service, their data protection as a service vision. Mm. I want to talk to EMC about that in, in the upcoming segment. It was the, here at VMworld in 2010 that uh, Jim McNeil, who was at the time CEO of Falcon Store, put forth the vision of data protection as a service and, and, and the Apple time machine, but the company really didn't have the resources to execute on that vision. So that's one, and then from an asset management standpoint, you're going to have to rethink some of the, the processes around that you've hardened around backup. So David, thanks for coming on. You're going to be back uh, a little later uh, to interview some of the practitioners with me. So we've got uh, the technologists from EMC coming up. We're going to ask them about their vision and we've got a couple of customers coming on. So keep it right there. This is theCUBE, we're live from VMworld 2013. We'll be right back. <laughs>